Greetings! This is another Sprocket video and today on the 10th of April the new internals update actually released. Finally! However, I still have access to the previous version V0.127 and I want to show you my latest creations in this version because I know that they work here. So yeah, our first subject is the Anvil self-propelled gun. Now this is the old version. We will obviously take a look at the new one as well. However, let's take some notes to make some comparisons later. First of all, the leaf springs are quite old on this one. I'm no longer proud of these. And uh, look at the turret in comparison to the hole. It's uh, a bit too small in my uh, humble opinion and the placement of the gun, or just the gun overall, doesn't have these uh, proportional issues either. So, let's see the new Anvil's prototype. As you can see, this does not really have a turret, it just has an exposed gun, which uh, might be familiar to you if you have been following my activities on my YouTube community section. And uh, look at these improved leaf springs. These uh, existed uh, beforehand. I just took from, I just uh, took them from a medium tank of mine and uh, slapped them onto this hull. And yeah, but as you can see, it doesn't quite have a turret, which is an issue solved by the proper Anvil self-propelled gun. As you can see, the turret in proportion to the hull is uh, much better looking and just generally much better looking and uh, the short barreled uh, 155mm gun gives it a comical appearance and it reminds me of a photoshop edit I did uh, years ago of a French artillery from World of Tanks. However, as you can see it doesn't have uh, the long barrel and the roof armor which are problems solved by the Anvil 2. As you can see, it has the long barreled uh, 155mm gun and the custom muzzle brake, which uh, this time is made of these uh, placeable objects, which means that uh, the shells don't get disoriented. It also has this roof over here and this travel lock, which uh, wasn't present on the Anvil 1, however, it is present here and it was present on the old Anvil 2, so yes. This 22 tons tank has a 310 horsepower engine, which uh, gives it a rather mediocre mobility, pair that with the Lecluster armor profile and the long reload on this uh, not so adequate gun, and you get something that was not really meant for uh, any of the scenarios uh, currently in this version of the game. So yes, I'm not going to play with this, however, I did win the field scenario once before with this vehicle, so it's uh, completely possible, just uh, unlikely. So yes, I guess this would be the Anvil 2 self-propelled gun. As I said, it's more of a dust collector in a museum than an actual vehicle meant for uh, fighting, at least uh, in the current scenarios in this game. So, yes, I guess it is what it is. Our next uh, subject is the Hyena Armored Personnel Carrier. And uh, you might ask, Gunther, haven't you already shown uh, all four of them to us? Well, yes, that's true. However, the thing is I made several new variants and the first of them is this new tank destroyer variant with the turret of this medium tank of mine which also has the previously seen leaf spring suspension. Don't ask how does putting a medium tank turret on an armored personnel carrier make it a tank destroyer but uh, I guess it is what it is. And this is the artillery version of the hyena. And again, if you've been paying attention to my activities on my YouTube community section, you already saw these two, although I believe uh, for this one I actually added these uh, 
armor pieces uh, later on, so maybe this is new, although I can't really remember. And again, this is the gun of the Anvil one, so yes, it's it's just a high enough with a 155mm howitzer, nothing that crazy. What is crazy is the next high enough variant and that one is a self-propelled rocket launcher variant. It has 40, yes, you heard that right, 40 155mm rockets, which translates to a single 75mm gun which has 120 shells. And this one right here is actually the only uh, well-performing vehicle in this video, so it's the only one I'm going to play. However, let's see some more Hyena variants. Like this third artillery Hyena, which has a 205mm gun. <laughs> Don't ask how I got the idea for this, I have no idea, but I'm glad I uh, made this. <laughs> it, it's so stupid. Uh, so the Anvil, uh, the Anvil's gun has only a 320 something meters per second shell velocity. This 205 millimeter gun has below 300. It's such a pathetic uh, shell. It, it, it just uh, flies through the air like, uh, like I don't know, a paper airplane. It's uh, so damn slow and uh, so comical to see. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not really an effective weapon. It's not even meant to be one. It's just something uh, quite comical. But uh, all right, take this 205 millimeters gun. Now ask the question. What is the largest gun I can mount on the hyena's uh, chassis? Yes. It's me who we are talking about. Of course I can put an even bigger gun on my vehicles. This right here is a normal sized 205mm gun. Not a short one, a normal sized one. And uh, the thing with this one is it has uh, pretty damn large shells. So I put a crane on this vehicle and an automatic loader, or a semi-automatic one, I should say, and whatever this is, and these outriggers that uh, already pretty much touch the ground, but uh, you have to see this recoil, it's uh, unbelievable, I mean this whole vehicle is unbelievable in the most stupidest of uh, interpretations of the word. Look at this recoil! Uh, this is also the only late war uh, hyena variant, the other ones are all uh, mid-war era vehicles. And uh, even with a 3 cubic meters loader, this thing reloads in 25 seconds, so... Yeah, it's not exactly the most uh, battle-capable vehicle of mine, but... Uh, big gun. What else do you need to ask for? Also, this uh, travel lock actually looks like a coat hanger. I just uh, wanted to mention this fact because uh, it's kind of funny, actually. Alright, here we are in the field scenario and uh, you know what? Let's make this thing even more stupid. Alright, let's go. Uh, so... The Hyena uh, multiple rocket launcher system variant, being a mid-war vehicle, is not exactly the most agile, but uh, that doesn't really matter in all honesty. Alright, the enemies have spawned in, so let's have some target practice. And also, if you take a look, the gun barrel is uh, way 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 behind these, uh, these uh, launcher tubes which means that the shells can get disoriented and uh, you will see that when I uh, fire. Oh, you saw that? That was a disoriented shell. Oh, that was another one. And the third one, and the fourth one. Yeah, this is the firepower of the Hyena rocket launcher. <laughs> it's... Uh, 
it's really uh, quite a unique concept to have rocket launchers on a troop carrier. Now that I think about it, except for the long barreled 205mm uh, uh, hyena, all of them are actually troop carriers with uh, some extra features. Five enemy togs taken down already. I couldn't even fire a single shot at them. That's what I call a Oh, would you look at that, my teammates just carried my ass. Uh, yes, this is the efficiency of the rocket launcher hyena. <laughs> it's so stupid, I love this thing with all my heart. Although the hyenas are uh, kind of punching bags for my stupid ideas, but uh, I mean, that's life, I guess. So, before talking about the third subject of the video, let's talk a bit about my channel. So, as you might or might not know, Scrap Mechanic was, an, was a pretty important game for my channel, and I made tanks there, some of those tanks uh, even made it to Sprocket and made them here too, but there was another pretty important game for my channel, and that was Cross Out. Now, in that game, I have created some pretty tank-like vehicles, although calling uh, most of them tanks uh, would be uh, pretty far-fetched. However, the creativity in that game really inspired me to make uh, this uh, third vehicle in this video, and it was actually a cross-out build of mine uh, that I was uh, really proud of, although it didn't perform very well, and that's kinda true for this uh, Sprocket version as well, it's not exactly a performer. So, let's take a look at uh, my Rapture tank. Uh, it's... Uh, I don't know how much this counts as a tank, but I say it is, so I guess it's a tank. Uh, let's start with the front, because I know you have several questions. So here is the original build from Crossout, and this uh, front plow thing basically works as a melee weapon which uh, disables enemy movement parts like wheels, tracks or even legs in some cases, or wedges them uh, onto me to have uh, some uh, close shots with my shotguns, which uh, are 37mm uh, guns in this game. And this vehicle's name is Rapture because uh, those are the shotgun weapons I used on the Crossout vehicle. So yes, this is actually named after the Crossout vehicle's uh, weapons. That's kind of cool actually. Uh, the design overall is uh, unique. Let's just say unique. Uh, there are no other words to describe this, because who the hell would even think of such a thing? I mean, 8 37mm guns in a row next to each other facing the front. As you can see, I put some extra effort into the details. As you can see, I used decals for this leather, this uh, chain over here, some stowage boxes in the rear and the other side and these uh, bright red external fuel carriers also are uh, made with decals. As for the mobility, it's uh, not exactly the most mobile thing, and it isn't exactly the most well protected either, although it does weigh uh, 28 tons, so it's not light either, so it's just uh, nothing vehicle really. Now that I think about it, in the title of the video, I didn't exactly promise you good vehicles, I just uh, promised you unique designs, and these things you saw here are certainly unique, especially whatever the hell this rupture tank is. Uh, I mean, what would you even compare this to? I don't think you can actually compare this to anything. It's, it's uh, such an oddity, it's uh, beyond unreasonable, it's... 
weird. What can I say? <laughs> uh, yes, so this would be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the dislike button. If not, hit the dislike button. If you want to, you can unsubscribe and tell me in the comments which uh, unique design was the most unique and which one was your favorite. And uh, I'm curious. How many designs of mine will be broken when I open this game in the new update? Alright then, bye.